Hi, in this lesson, we're learning about responsive web design so that you can build products and services that work on any device. Hi, I'm Angel from RT Course Experts, and we help creative online course teachers with their tech. In this lesson, we're going to go over responsive web design. We're going to talk about what is it, why use it, what are the challenges if you don't use it. We're going to get into the details of how to best create and test those responsive web design screens. And finally, we'll go into an example. First of all, what is responsive web design? Well, it's a way to make web pages that look amazing on different sizes and orientations. So sizes are screen sizes. It could be a big giant monitor. It could be a smaller tablet or a mobile phone. It could be a tablet that's in vertical portrait mode, or it could be oriented horizontally in landscape mode. Devices like a tablet would know its orientation and would be able to tell the browser or the apps to display it in the best possible format. For web pages that are smart and they know how big the device is and the orientation of the device. Now, why would you use it? Well, you would use it because you can provide the best experience across all devices, like the desktops, tablets, and phones. You're not going to want to take the desktop format, the layout, and squeeze it on a phone, right? That just won't work. Everything will be tiny. So as an example, on a phone, you may have the menu hidden, or you take the full screen and you break it into two columns. So on a phone, everything is longer. The page is a lot longer, but you can read each section. First, you look at the content, then you scroll down and you can maybe see additional columns like sidebars or navigation bars. So that's the most important thing. You don't want to just take the phone design and squeeze it out on a desktop. That's going to look ridiculous. And you don't want to take the desktop design and squeeze it down to a phone, which is unusable. So these responsive web design techniques know what they're rendering on which device and what's the orientation, and they intelligently know how to display the chunks, the columns, the rows, which image to use. Should the menu be there all the time on the sidebar, or should the menu sort of go away and only when you hit the mini menu called the hamburger menu, will it pop up the menu for just a few seconds so it's not in your way. If you don't use responsive web design, you're going to have frustrated users. They're going to be seeing content with the wrong font. They're going to see ginormous or tiny images. They're not going to be able to scroll efficiently during the normal consumption, during a lesson or browsing the messages in a community. Those screens need to be optimized. And if you don't, use responsive web design, those main experiences are going to be frustrating at best. So let's go into some of the basics for responsive web design. Even if you're not building it yourself and you're getting a tech team or you're using a third-party tool like Thinkific, Kajabi, Teachable, Padia, Mighty Networks, etc., that's okay, but at least you can describe these requirements. You can compare the systems on different devices and you can at least be able to know so that you can provide the best experience for your students and members. First of all, let's go into basics. In order to do a responsive web design, we're talking about a web page. Whether you know it or not, whether you're in a browser or not, you might be in an app, but behind the scenes, that app is probably a web designed app. Those web pages are built on HTML. And HTML at a high level not only has all the content, the text, the images, the videos, but it has the basic structure of the content. For example, are you showing two columns or one column? How many rows are we talking about? Is there a header row, kind of a middle body and a footer row? 
all those basic fundamentals, columns, rows, and the asset, the text, the images, the videos, those are all described by HTML. Then HTML is enhanced with cascading style sheets, CSS files. These files specify the design and the display rules. So as an example, CSS would describe the borders, the colors, the font size, very fundamental things for each area. It could be defined for the whole page or you could define it by section by section on the screen. CSS also lets you define when it should display things. So you could use CSS to say on this device, hide this chunk, hide this block, or on this device, show this alternative block because it's a mobile phone. So I wanna use this special layout, this special design block that has a real friendly mobile design. And on desktop, I'm gonna hide it or vice versa. So CSS gives you these rules on what it should look like and also when to hide and show things. Now, the main thing about responsive web design is the different widths and heights. Remember, we're talking about what's visually available. This is the viewport, not necessarily what's below the fold where you scroll. So we need to know at any point, what's the width and height of that content. And the devices know that the CSS will help us figure this out. In addition to the width and height, the next thing is the orientation. Are you holding that tablet sideways or vertically? If you hold it vertically, you're going to have a more narrow width, but it'll be longer. If you hold it landscape format, it'll be wider, but the height will be shorter. And in some cases, devices like tablets and mobile phones will let the browser know what orientation they're in, whereas maybe on your desktop, your monitor, you're going to manually configure that desktop. So the browser may not even know that. So you're thinking about width and height, and then you're thinking about what's the orientation. And with those together, you're going to have what's called a viewport, which is what's the visible width and height of content for your course, your community, your teacher website, your webinar, etc. There's this concept called media query, which lets you define custom styles based on the width and height. The media query can be configured to say, if the width is below this, then style it this way. Or if the viewport width is greater than a certain size, then show the layout, the content, the design, the style in this other format. Yes, show two columns or only show one column at a time. The next concept is fluid columns. So you can have a fluid column layout. A fluid column layout uses percentages instead of fixed width pixels. So for years and years, people built websites and screens by saying this column over here it's going to be 300 pixels, and this other column is going to be 700 pixels. That's how it was historically. These days, with responsive web design and fluid columns, you're going to use percentages. You're going to say the left column is going to be 30% of the screen, and the right big column is going to be 70% of the width of the screen. That thinking makes your screens, your design, your pages much better across all the different devices. So this is really about using percentages instead of fixed widths. Next up is text, like your fonts, headings, the paragraphs, all that stuff. The text and the images should also use percentages instead of pixels. So instead of you saying that image is going to be 720 pixels wide, you're going to say that that image is 80% of its parent's container. The parent container 
might be half the screen, and you're gonna say that this image is gonna fill 80% of that container. And by doing this, your text, fonts, and images are gonna scale beautifully within their containers. And the same thing with your text. So instead of you using a font is 17 pixels uh, tall, you're gonna use a variety of other units that are available that are percentage based so that your fonts will scale proportionally and they'll look great whether you're on a mobile phone or on a giant desktop. Finally, once you have a system that either you built or you're just using a platform that somebody else built that is responsive and looks great across all the different device formats and orientation, you're gonna to wanna to test. So you're gonna to wanna to test, first of all, on actual physical devices, on your computer browser, on your tablet, on your kid's tablet, on your phone, on your wife's phone, et cetera. You're gonna to wanna to really test it out on all these physical devices Hey, even when you go to a store like Target, Best Buy, Staples, et cetera, see what your sales page looks like or what your website looks like on these different devices. And then also you should be aware that on your browser, on your computer, there are features that allow you to simulate a different device. You can go ahead and on Chrome or Firefox or Edge, et cetera, and you can simulate that you're on a mobile phone or a tablet, and they sometimes have a nice long drop down of all these different devices. And so you can see what it would potentially look like on those other devices. Maybe you have an Android, but you want to see what it looks like on an iPhone. Browsers give you those tools as well. That's responsive web design. Let's go into an example. In this example, we're gonna go over how a course will look when it's been designed with responsive capabilities. First of all, we're gonna look at a desktop. So when you're looking at a course and you're in the lesson, you might have a great sidebar that lets you hop around all the different sections and lessons, and it's always there and you can have different scroll bars. You can scroll on the left, scroll on the right, and you're seeing your content. Maybe it's a slide, maybe it's video. You have a nice play button. You have the header. If you need to, you can jump to your profile and you can hop all around. And on a desktop, you're not only gonna see the slides and the videos, but you might also see some text or paragraph or resources below your content. You have a great open view and you're seeing all your most important content available to you and you can click, you can listen to content while your mouse is on a sidebar with a scroll bar. That's the desktop and it's giving you that kind of immersive experience. Next up is a little smaller than a desktop, is a tablet. So on a tablet, you're gonna try to consume content. So as an example, once you're in the lesson, you're gonna want that tablet to go full screen and show you everything that's playing on that video. And if you needed to, you could potentially press a button, maybe it's the menu, and at that point, a navigation bar would show up. But in general, because the tablet, you're holding it, you're really consuming that content, it's letting you consume that video, that lesson. And then if you need to, and when you need to, you can press some buttons to go back to all your courses, go back to the lesson structure, the navigation bar, et cetera. And then you can make those pop-ups go away so that you can consume and really focus on the parts of the content that you need. Next up is mobile. Mobile is the smallest of all the layouts. So they may be holding their phone in a vertical position or they may be holding their phone landscape. And since mobile phones have the least real estate available, they definitely use the hamburger menu. The hamburger menu is the three bars icon that pops up a menu. They definitely use the hamburger menu to hide content or to only show pop-ups when necessary, and then you can hide the pop-up or hide the supplemental content. I want you to be focused on your 
main content, whether you're holding it vertically or horizontally. If you hold it horizontally, it's going to know that, yes, it's a mobile phone, but it has enough landscape view to see the content in a wide rectangular format so that it takes up the full phone, especially if the video was 16 by 9. So that's it in a nutshell. Desktop is going to show you all these different options all at the same time. Tablet is going to let you really focus on consuming that one feature at a time. Maybe you're just watching the lessons, and then when you need to, it'll pop up some overlays. And then mobile phone, will definitely break up columns and really focus on one chunk of the whole screen at a time. And then when you need to, pop-ups will come up or the other content will be below the main content and you simply scroll on your smartphone. So responsive pages provide the best user experience. If you want to level up, Try your different products and services on different devices just to get smart on what they're doing today and maybe where you have opportunities to grow. You're also going to use this as you're working with technical people to define your requirements and how you want your services to work across all the different customer experiences. So now you're a lot smarter on responsive web design. Remember to think about the size of your device, the orientation of your device, and then also as you're looking and testing and auditing your experiences, double check the fonts, the images, uh, to make sure that they're scaling appropriately and that you don't have tiny content or massive content that takes over the screen. And then also, verify that you can scroll and how content that might traditionally all be shown at the same time might now be stacked because it's a smaller screen. And if you scroll down, you'll see some content that previously was on the sidebar when you had a big screen, but now because you're on a smaller screen, that sidebar content is now its own one column all on its own below the main content. To learn more, check out the info and links in the notes. If you're loving this stuff, subscribe to keep leveling up your creative business. And if you need any tech help with your courses, community, or teacher website, visit www.rtcourseexperts.com. Thanks for hanging out. Let's stay in touch.